Welcome to Heart to Heart, our chat with the cast and crew of When Calls the Heart. I'm Christy, and I'm an admin from Michigan. How, who am I joined by this morning? I'm Annette, a Facebook admin from South Carolina. And I'm Marg, and I'm an admin from San Diego, California. And we are joined by our showrunner, John Tinker. How are you this morning? Yo, ho, ho. Got a <laughs> quote, little Jack from the week Aww. before. Yo, ho, He's ho. so adorable. I'm great. I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. We should before. say we tried a, we tried one of your wacky Zoom backgrounds, but it just didn't work today. Well, for all you Elvis fans, I was sitting in the jungle Aww. room. I was sitting in Elvis's jungle room. Darn. <laughs> and now we're in difficulty. the lamp room? <laughs> now we're just in, yeah, now we're just in uh, my office. Well, that's where all, to the, see you. <laughs> all the beauty is is born. So that's that means good things. Well, well, before we dive into the people. episode, not, let's talk about it. We want to thank the Hardys for their incredible response to our tweet fest last night. We uh, trended at number well five. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just like old times. That's exciting. That's very it's great exciting. fun. Great fun. Hallmark has heard us. So, John, let's start have. off with yes. your favorite scene of the night. What moment would you say really touched your heart last night? Oh, you added those touched my heart words. Now I'm going to have to change. I typically am a, a smart aleck when it comes to this. not a smart aleck, oh. but I tend to enjoy, I mean, because those bigger moments seem so obvious, and there are hopefully lots of heart touching moments. Um, I, I tend to talk about the littler things, and if, if you might allow me, um, I, I liked two things last night. One, I liked, I liked uh, Kevin McGarry, Nathan, getting a chance to play some comedy and nuance when he was on the case for the Kling Peaches and things like that. I just thought he was funny. And then I, even, I really loved it when he and, he and Elizabeth, Nathan and Elizabeth were at the stable, and she said, oh, I see, you're trying to teach Robert by disciplining him, by allowing him to clean up the stable. And, he, and, and Nathan realizes, oh no, I, I'm, I'm paying him because he missed out on a couple of weeks worth of wages. So, but that's a much better idea. I find him really, when he's really playing those human moments, a lot of fun. Uh, oh, I really yeah. like that. We've enjoyed those so much too. So we have a question. Uh, Lee published an article, the mayor has no clothes. I'm a news editor, and I have to say, that is some headline. So Lavana Morgan from Olean, New York, thinks Lee is obsessed about Hickam being the mayor. Can you tell us about the role you think Lee and the Valley Voice are playing in both informing and stirring up the town a little bit? Yes, she's right. Uh, the, the newspaper is, is turning out to be uh, something that's going to have an effect on a lot of people, not just on the town, as as a community, but on all kinds of people, Lee in particular. And in, in full disclosure, at one point, the writer's room had talked about Lee becoming the mayor. And then we realized that um, we, we've, we, if Bill was the mayor again, he would be the mayor again. And if Lee were the mayor, we thought that sort of played into a lot of the areas which which Lee Coulter had been sort of caught up in. And, and we thought this would get, give Kevin and Bill, uh, you know, Kevin and um, Jack Wagner and Ben Rosenbaum, all different things to play and put them in, in different situations where they hadn't been before. So, yes, you're going to see, you know, as I said, I think early on, this, this newspaper and Lee being managing editor is going to really um, cause some problems and, and some resolutions. And... You know, what you what we all go through in life is is change. There's nothing constant in life but change. And and our characters are going to go through those kinds of changes where hopefully on the other side they come out the better for it. And that's really what what's most important, that we we allow these characters of ours to go through change and to grow. And Lee's got some uh, growth to do here and, and the newspaper will be the catalyst for that. So she's absolutely right. Very interesting. So hang, hang in there with Lee. Hang in there. Wow. <laughs>
Um, the two mayor rivals have taken two very different approaches for Hickam's term. I loved how Bill was mentoring Hickam <laughs> last night. I thought that was really funny. Can you tell us more about that? I just thought he was confident and secure enough um, to, to do that for, for, um, for Mike. And um, Bill is, you know, as, as we all know, Bill historically has been someone who nurtures and, and, and brings folks along. So it seemed like an obvious thing for him to do. And Lee, at this point where he's a little, um, he's still a little shook up by his loss and he's in new water we just thought that that he would try and do something here um, that that would help the town. He doesn't realize he's he's also hurting some other folks, perhaps in the process. Um, and oh. and that um, so so again, we try and put them in different situations where they're going to have to find new resources and dig deep down in themselves to find ways to come out again uh, better for it and hopefully reaching out to other people around them and, and doing a good job. Yeah, he's got a little push and pull within him. Obviously he, he retreated and canceled the additional run, but then you knew, you know, in that saloon scene where he wanted to like jump on it and promo the next days, you know, he's, He's really vacillating. He does vacillate. His ego and, is involved, clearly. Yeah, and and what I do also like about that, Mark, is that um, he really relies on Rosemary when it comes yes. to what what he should do. And they're true partners in every sense of the word. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, rather than have a partnership that didn't work out, which would have been funny, um, we we decided to play it this way, where they would each be able to to help the other. And, and therefore, in the process, do a bigger, better thing for the community. Yeah, lots of, lots of modeling of those threads about marriage, you know, uh, not that they're married yet or maybe ever, but Luke is saying that he would discuss it with Elizabeth before he did the saloon and Joseph saying... Uh -huh. You know, that we all had the, the marriages pray, in the pray about this you know i mean that's right. you know they're, they're trying to decide where to invest so there's these interesting little relationship threads you're pulling through that we don't always oh, see oh good well you know uh, an oh, perhaps a too oft used phrase we're trying to uh, be be our better selves here yes absolutely well, Mike Hickam telling the locked door that it was embarrassing him, <laughs> we found really humorous. <laughs> um, He's calm really well, Ben does. Yeah. <laughs> and our fellow admin, Jeanette Stevens, uh, loves seeing Mike's sisters and asked, could we see a couple of them sisters come to town someday? I would love to see them all, all of the M's come to town. I think that would be great. <laughs> Bring them. Can you and, name no, all the ebbs, though? Can you oh, name no. them all? Um, and by the way, this is not. This is a bit off topic, but you know, it hit me. Uh, he says, "Tough getting into the bathroom," and that's a bit anachronistic. We we wouldn't. Uh, we're guilty of that. Probably was not the the standard uh, phrase, the, the designation. So, yeah, tough getting into the outhouse. Tough getting into yeah. the. Well, and then I, and then of course, I just wrote it off to, well, he's being polite, but still it probably wasn't the word that they used. It was not the designation. We try and do our, we try and do our due diligence, but every once in a while, we just put something in there that, that is anachronistic. So we apologize. Well, I thought grifter and fisticuffs. Those were my two words of go. the night. I just love those words. So there you go. Um, <laughs> Speaking of fisticuffs, um, Hardy Rebecca Beckett was surprised to see Lee get into that tussle. I mean, he's just typically not an angry guy. Like, what is happening with him? No, he's not an angry guy. And and um, it, it all goes toward, he's off balance right now. He hasn't found his footing. And he won't find his footing in the, at the newspaper for, for a little bit now. Um, his his talent has taken him by surprise, and he's he's able to pour 
his his gift of 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 that of of being um, at, at one time a nurturing person, but at an, but at the same time critical. So how do you do those two things in a constructive way that that don't just come out to be uh, censorious, that don't just come out to be critical of someone else without being helpful. And and he's as I said, he's got some he's got some road to travel before he learns how to do that. He's just off his game. Um, mm -hmm. That and again, in full disclosure, we were going to do some more building. There was going to be a billboard that went up that trumpeted the coming jobs and things like that. But we realized the real point of it was in fact that Lee just didn't know how to direct his energy and his upset. You know, I, I do like the scene when he's in Bill's office and he and he says, I, look, I don't care, just fix it. And then he says, no, I do care. I care very much about this community. And then Bill, of course, being wise and seeing the big picture because right now Lee's rather myopic about the situation and self-absorbed. He says, well, I don't have a newspaper. And then Lee gets the idea. But, but again, he's going to find out the pen is very mighty. And um, so that uh, I'll stop talking about Lee's journey before I spoil it all. It, it speaks to when we spoke to Peter DeLuise last week, um, he really got into talking about bringing characters to their knees. And it does seem like a lot of our, uh, a number of our characters are very vulnerable right now. And so Maybe you could say a bit more about the writing process and why it's important in story arcs to sort, I don't know that you really want to bring them to their, their knees, but you know what we're saying, you know, kind of compound their circumstances, whether it's, you know, Lee, we've seen him go through a number of sort of middle age crises and, you know, Hickam, you know, I think people were very empathetic with Hickam last night and didn't want him to appear like a dunce. And then Nathan, of course. So tell us about why writers do that and what the, what the thought is behind sure. that. Well, I can talk a little bit toward that. Before I do, um, Hickam's smarter than your average bear and, and people don't give him credit. You know, that was a very small nod to Hickam when he's ordering an ale at the bar and Bill's already ordered his ale and it comes out with a foamy <laughs> head on it. And, and he's no dummy. And he gives Bill that beer and he says, thanks a lot. Hey, listen, I can do this job. Uh, I just think it's fun to to bring characters along and, and whether we bring them to their knees or just certain realizations um, that, that they need to make some changes in their life or some changes in the way that they're talking to people or viewing themselves or dealing with others. That's what drama is all about. And um, I think it's in part why and I, I could be wrong, but I don't want to speak for the audience, but so many people love the Gowan character because he's gone through so many, talk about bringing a character to his knees and he still manages to get up. And, and when you get up, you want to get up the better for it. And, and whatever those, whatever you do, whether you live by aphorisms, like whatever makes you strong, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger, or you rely on God or whatever that resource may be for you. Uh, that's fun to explore for these these characters. You know, Lee right now, Lee and Rosemary, it's very clear each other is a resource for the other. And I think that Aaron and, you know, Elizabeth and Lucas are on their way to finding that out. Um, so it, again, whether it's an arc or just a single episode story, you want to find where a character's weakness lies and and see how he's going to overcome that and hopefully do so in a heroic manner. Got it, got it. And can you say a little bit more about Nathan too? Because I think Peter was specifically referencing um, Nathan's story arc and that, you know, that there was this, that the race may have originally been about um, Nathan's PTSD or coming back from that. And we're, we, a little bit more of that was, uh, was revealed this yeah, week. Yeah, you know, Again, I, I I hate for, and maybe it's a good thing. I feel like, you know, we get naked here, but but it, again, in the interest of full disclosure, there was more to the PTSD that we wanted to do, and it was very hard to fill, um, in particular because we had May coming in, and and we wanted to interweave them, and and perhaps we gave it a bit short shrift, but 
Yeah, that's where the, the, the race was supposed to help facilitate him getting over that. And, and in, in a writer's mind, when they don't have time to do it or they haven't done it adequately in their own mind, you, you, you say, well, that really was there. It just wasn't addressed fully. Here's, here's what it really comes down to and where I was going when it comes with Nathan. Um, I don't know that he, to use the, the, the metaphor that, that Peter used, was he, he, gets, he does get off his knees by the end of the season. Um, but it's a complex character who's been through a lot. And, and between where he's come from, the guilt he carried about, um, Jack Thornton the, the, coming to the town, believing he fell in love with, with Aaron, with Elizabeth. Uh, there, it's, a, it's a full full character and, and it's, you don't wanna race through it. And so we've still got a long journey to go with, with Nathan before he hits a stride. But again, going back to you know, the character's journey, um, he'll hit a stride, but then he'll, he'll fall again or he'll stumble and as the result- We all of, do. Yeah, and so, um, and by the way, that's not to say, I don't, I find Nathan's journey this season to be uh, satisfying. And, um, and, and it was one in which Kevin McGarry uh, participated in, in fashioning. So I hope others like it too. Yes. That was a long answer. Sorry. No worries. And, and yes, I think we're very much enjoying it. Pierre was referencing a note that Hallmark had made that, that may have changed the direction a little bit that they didn't want um too much ptsd yeah they didn't want too much of that with yeah with them and now. i can understand that and and um i i i attribute his his recovery or his apparent recovery to those around him and not the least of whom is Allie. so absolutely well of course she would contribute let's switch gears a little bit <clears throat> Kay okay. Lewis Smith of Lake Gaston, North Carolina, adored seeing Elizabeth shelling peas on her porch. She <laughs> said it brought back sweet memories of shelling them with her mother and that it was one of those times they could sit and enjoy an in-depth conversation. And she wants to know whose idea that was. I, I don't know whose idea it was. I, I do know that, that since moving south, not that there aren't plenty of other regions of the country and around the world that we shelled peas. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been exposed to things like that and, and living here in Georgia, um, I'd like to put more of those, we'd like to put more of those in there. That was just, it's background, but it's rich in texture. And it says a lot, of, not only about the life then, but, but it shows everyone um, a little bit of their, their life while talking about something else. My wife said she's, you know, a lot of deep conversations, shelling, you know, shucking uh, peas and shelling, you know, snapping peas and shucking corn, all of it. Corn, shucking corn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> very folksy. And it came across. It was very sweet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so speaking of Allie, who was in that scene, a lot of characters are wrestling with fitting in. Molly and Flo want to try to hold off change with etiquette lessons, and Fiona and Henry are working through their bumpy interactions under the worst possible circumstances. Yes. What? <laughs> it goes back to what Marg was alluding to, which is you bring these characters, whether the situations or whether it's the, the people with whom they're working, such as Gowan and, and Fiona. Um, I, you know, one of my favorite scenes from a week ago was when she rips into Gowan and just comes out of nowhere and she lets him have it and then turns around and, and sort of double edgedly says, oh, my gosh, what have I done? Not only talking about just, you know, going off on Gowan, but what she did going to San Francisco. Um, so, again, those are those are fun and we hope to do more of those. And there are plenty of them coming up in the season. Okay. Yeah, that push and pull between her impulses, which, you know, she's obviously got great business instincts. That's she's what's very smart, her. Person. She's very smart. Um, and yet she's not, you know, as experienced, of course, in the oil business and in some of these negotiations. So um, so we're seeing that a little bit, that push right. and pull. And, and Gowan acknowledged that. He said, listen, you, 
you brought in you were dropped in the middle of this and yes my love i love those moments where henry's you know henry softened quite a bit obviously since season one yeah that's a neat echo of how bill is mentoring um hickam too mm -hmm. and i hadn't thought of that that the 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 fiona hickam um Ooh. pair are both getting mentored um yep. last night that's cool very cool oh good well, speaking of Hickam, their hardies have been surprised and delighted um, to see a possible interest between Hickam and uh, Nurse Carter. Uh, very interesting, the little riff you have between their inner beauty and their outer beauty. Yes. Any thoughts um, on that? You know, it's it's funny. He's a very particular character, and and I ascribe the way he interacts with the women on the show to having grown up in a, in a family full of sisters. Uh, and, and that's true. the reason we had them, uh, had Hickam come from a family of, of, of sisters, of women, of girls and women. Um, you know, he's friends with Fiona, he's friends with Faith. He, he, he doesn't have to go out with someone and have a romantic date. He's friends and, 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 and sometimes it's mistaken. Uh, you know, Faith thought it at first and, and uh, excuse me, Fiona thought it at first last season and and Faith thinks thought it a little bit the other night but um he's just a good guy and he he respects women as much as he respects men and um so again that's that's a piece of his character that that for me gets explained quickly talking about coming from so many women yeah and then the whole thing of the you know the contrast with the discussion about inner beauty but then you know faith and mesu are also that's kind of it's nice to get a compliment and it's just funny in hallmark you have you know there's so much beauty you can't really just be about inner beauty on hallmark because everyone is so stinking beautiful right right <laughs> you know wow that's you just you gave me a story idea that's a great you know talking about his sisters coming and and hickam Oh, so, good. Interesting. That's a good story idea. Thank you. Good. Thank you, whoever wrote that question. All right. That was Jeanette Stevens. We'll give her full credit. Well, now you give her a gold star. I'm putting on more lighting here because it's getting you dark. You do need to disclose, however, John, that that you're not allowed to receive story ideas from Hardy's because that is something we try to reiterate. Um, what, oh, okay, actually, it's my own idea. That's how what well, that's how. <laughs> <laughs> That's how writers work. You, you see a particular characteristic. So you're one. stealing the so idea. No, the it only one own. I steal from, I have full, I have full permission to steal from. Yeah. Okay. Steal from my wife Fair. abundantly and right. frequently. Exactly. Exactly right. Now we just like to set these little because we are admins. We like to set these little boundaries. You're 100 percent right. <laughs> Makes our job easier. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Well, before we jump into next week's episode, Julie Davis Williams of North Carolina loved Elizabeth's reference to the book wagon as something that she felt called to do. Well, we see her taking books to kids in the mountains. As, as my mother would frustrate me wildly, she'd say, no. <laughs> uh, we, we will... Uh, we will see her this season. No, we won't. We won't. We we we. You know, it's like laying carpet. We ran out of we ran out of room. We had more carpet than we had room. So it's not for this season. But but we thought that uh, um, you know here's why we thought that would be an interesting um, area in which uh, to explore for Elizabeth. She came here. She came from a, a, a well-to-do comfortable background and she looked for adventure and where would it be a challenge and where was the need well she, i can't say she's got it waxed in in hope valley but she realizes now there are other needs and she needs to ex, you know just expand her territory and she's always looking to to be and to do and to help so that that will hopefully happen should there be a 10th season and hardys have done everything they can with their tweet fest Yes. Um, turning our eyes to next week, it looks like May Sue and Jeffrey are going to, you know, there's going to be some kind of explosion with them. Um, and Lucas seems to tell Nathan 
maybe to give him some advice or to tell him to hold out hope. Can you give us any little morsel of what is coming? I'm not going to give that? you a morsel. I'm going to give you, I'm going to adjure you. I'm going to encourage you. It's going to take a couple of episodes here to unwrap what we wound up okay. or, or what we wound tightly and need to unravel in the next two episodes. So there's things that happens in the next episode and there'll be things that happen in the next episode with regard to Nathan and May and, and, and certain storylines. But um, we continue to either wind or wind, wind up or wind down. Take so choice. you're saying that the hardies who are Christmas present shakers are going to be shaking for another couple of weeks. <laughs> well, but, but if you shake them and you know what's there, then before you know it's episode 12 and you're saying, what a, where'd the season go? Yes. Oh, no, that that is absolutely true. Um, today we heard, you know, there there was not enough going on last year. We heard there was too much going on. You know, it's just. I think it's clear that whatever you give us, there's going to be some contrarians who are going to say not so much. So, oh. yeah. So if you, you know, patience is a virtue. We're going to continue yes. to shake our present and hope for resolution in a few episodes is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. And, and further storylines that will unfold. We still have some episodes to go. We yeah. still have I know we're only yeah, halfway. halfway. Yeah. So we have some we have some ways to go. All right. Is there anything else that you wanted to say or cover today that we have not covered? I apologize for coming from live to you from my car. <laughs> I'm sitting Did outside. All the stars know that the best lighting is in the car. Sitting outside so. Rhonda's mama's house where the internet's <laughs> faster and the buttermilk's colder. Uh, we're Good. so glad you're there. I'm sorry, Good. but, but well, thank we you hope for making we... room. No, we hope you have a very blessed Holy yep. Week and a happy Easter. And will there be Amen. some buttermilk? In I don't some know, biscuits? but there'll be pass there there's Passover. Passover. Yes. Passover, Passover as well. Yeah. yeah. All of the holidays converging this week. So parties, we certainly wish you a happy Easter, Passover, et cetera. Um, John, thank you so much for being thank with us. You all. Thank you all. You're, you're so patient and, and thank you with a with technical glitches today, but I can't thank you enough. I can't thank the Hardys enough for, for their patience and their and their um, in, endurance. Um, nine seasons, hopefully 10, and for their enthusiasm and their commitment. So thank you very much. They're, they're feeling all of that, John. And um, we just can't wait to be back this Sunday night. Easter night after your yeah. services, your egg hunt, your ham, all that is over. You join us 8 p.m. on the Hallmark Channel, and we're going to tweet with the hashtag Hardies, and we'll see you next week. Bye.